Chaitanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We welcome everyone to our uh, study of Bhagavad Gita at the level of Bhakti Shastri. And we are on the final chapter, chapter 18. This is the final class this evening. I'll just share the screen. Mm. I wanted to show you some things, some charts. Uh, Okay, so here is uh, here you can see the summary for the 18th chapter. We've covered so far uh, up to verse 54, the Brahma Bhutta, from Jnana Yoga to Brahma Bhutta, right? But the chapter began with Karma Yoga and then from 13 to 18, Jnana Yoga. Remember, Lord Krishna was describing five different factors which influence the uh, the action, or the different factors which influence the 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 and the, uh, the the what? <laughs> How to say? It? Five factors influencing action. Who was the actual doer? Who was the actual doer? The actual doer was ultimately, we said ultimately the super soul, but other factors are also involved. And then we spoke about the three modes. There's quite a, a big section there on the three modes, how the three modes influence everything, knowledge and understanding and the worker and the and the endeavor, all influenced by the modes of nature. And then after that we went on to speak about the different varnas or prescribed duties. And Lord Krishna explained that if people, if one will perform his prescribed duty in a, in a detached manner, then that is karma yoga, by performing your prescribed duty. Do your duty in a detached manner, that is karma yoga, and that can liberate one. And then after that, then Lord Krishna spoke about how by Jnana Yoga we can come to the Brahma Bhutta platform. And we heard about the Brahma Bhutta platform, right? Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma, the one who's on the platform of Brahman, he's a joyful soul. He sees everyone equally, he doesn't hanker or lament for anything. And in that condition, he's able to take up devotional service. So Brahma Bhutta is the goal. That's what the the Brahma the Brahma Gyani, he wants to come to that level of liberation. The impersonalists, the Advaitists, their goal is to get to Mukti. But devotional service, we said, began from that. So then the next section in the chapter is discussing devotional service, 
And we'll hear the glories of devotional service. We'll hear, first of all, about surrendering to the Super Soul and taking guidance from the Super Soul. And then we'll hear the most confidential knowledge. And after that, then Lord Krishna will glorify those who preach, those who are sharing the knowledge of devotion with others. They're very dear to Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna will speak some verses there, glorifying ones who will uh, give this knowledge to others. Then the final section on the chapter, Arjuna says he's ready to follow Lord Krishna's instruction. He's ready to do as Krishna asked. And Sanjay predicts victory. So these are the different sections, eight sections there in that 18th chapter. All right. Um. Here we can see the summary of the chapters, the 14th chapter, oh first of all 13th chapter, we began from the 13th chapter and we heard in the 13th chapter how the modes of nature influence a person and then 14th chapter Lord Krishna described about the modes of nature and he also described in 1426 how by devotion one can transcend the modes of nature. Then the 15th chapter began with Lord Krishna giving the analogy of the banyan tree and he described how on the higher branches of the banyan tree the demigods are situated and on the lower branches those of more demoniac nature including human beings and animals and so on they're all in the lower branches. So the, the, those in the higher platform they have divine qualities. So that was described in the 16th chapter. 16th chapter described the divine and the demoniac nature. Those who are godly, who are divine, they will follow Shastra. They have faith in the Shastra, so they get good results. And those who are demoniac, they don't follow Shastra, so they get a different result. That was the 16th chapter. Then the 17th chapter went on to describe Arjuna asked, asked a question, he wanted to know what about someone who doesn't follow Shastra but they have faith in a process, so what is their situation? And the reply was given, their faith will be in the modes, according to their mode of nature they will have faith in that particular mode. And then at the end of the 17th chapter, Lord Krishna explained that by chanting Om Tat Sat, by adding Om Tat Sat to everything, then you can bring in bhakti. You can develop bhakti from that. It can purify everything. So this is a very, very brief summary, connection between the different chapters which we've been studying in this unit. Mm. All right. We're going to go on. Let's see. We have our PowerPoint presentation here. Let's see. Okay, here's entanglement in the modes. We spoke about that, and we spoke about the modes, how they affect knowledge, action, the worker, understanding, determination, and happiness. Do you all remember happiness in the modes? Remember what is happiness in the mode of goodness? Anybody remember? Who can tell me happiness in the mode of goodness? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. I know Gita Indulekha knows. Let somebody else answer. Hare Krishna Maharaj. It's 
poison in the beginning and nectar at the end and also that is uh, realization okay very good and happiness in the mode of passion Okay. It's uh, derived from the contact of senses with the sense objects. Yes, very good, right. And what about this happiness in the mode of ignorance? Delusion from the beginning. Yes, another sim there are five symptoms. It's based on sleep, laziness, illusion. Good, yes. And only distress. Okay. Very good. Okay, so we won't go through all this. <laughs> this is the different modes of nature affecting everything. Understanding, ignorance, goodness, passion. Alright, here's happiness. Happiness, blind to self-realization, delusion from beginning to end, and comes from sleep and laziness. But there is no being existing freed from the three modes. All right. We won't take time to do these questions. Let's see. Oh, okay. This was the qualities of the different orders, the Brahman and the Kshatriya and the Vaishya and the Sudra. And then we spoke about how, by worship of the Lord, one can attain perfection by doing his duty. And we see in the picture, you can see in the illustration, some nice examples. Sudama, the florist, giving garlands to Krishna, and the fruit vendor giving fruits to Krishna, the devotee offering arti, like that. And we heard how every endeavor is covered by fault. You can see here in the in the slide, you know, a person's person's cooking, you know, but the whole thing, the chapati or whatever he cooked, went on, went on fire, or the devotee's ironing the kurtar, ironing the the shirt, but <laughs> it's got a big iron mark on it. So every. Every endeavour is covered with faults, we, but we shouldn't give up our work just because there's some fault. We have to continue. Okay, from, then from jnana to pure devotional service, from jnana yoga to pure devotional service, Brahma Buddha Prasanatma, right? We see all living entities equally. And you can see some living entities there. Hard to imagine <laughs> how they are equal. You know, the snake, the crocodile, the reptile, the yogi. They're all souls, but they're in different bodies. All right, so here's a, an interesting diagram to help you to understand something. On the bottom, vikarma, right? The yoga ladder. Bottom, vikarma, that's sinful activity. It's not on the yoga ladder. Then karma kanda. And then sakama yoga. Sakama yoga means with attachment. And then niskam karma yoga, detached work. And over here you have merging the impersonalists. Over here we have mystic cities, the yogis, mystic power. Some people do Astanga yoga, they may get mystic cities. Somebody thinks he's God. Somebody's meditating on the Paramatma and the devotee can get Prema Bhakti. Right? 
devotee can get prema bhakti. Samadhi. <laughs> okay. And so, just to put everything, merge everything in. And then after explaining about Brahma Bhuta, then Lord Krishna goes on to explain how we can conquer Krishna by devotional service. Right? This is shown in the verse 1855. Bhaktya mama bijanati. Yavam yas chasmi tadvataha. Right? This famous verse. One can understand me as I am, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and in this way, in full consciousness of me, by such devotion, he can enter into the kingdom of God. Now, this word vishate, vishate tad anantaram. Vishate means enters into, enters into. So, some people, they misunderstand the meaning of this vishate. And they think it means merging. You see, the Mayavadis, they're very fond of merging. The impersonalists, the Jnanis, the Vedantis, they want to merge. And then they take this word, Vishate, enters into, you see, and they take this verse and they say, by devotion, we enter into the oneness, you see. So, you, if you look here at the pictures on the slide, we've shown the examples which are talked about in Prabhupada's purport. Prabhupada talks about how a green bird goes into the green tree. You just like here, there's a bird here. You see, there's a, a bird here in the green tree. Now it's not so clear because the bird is the same color as the tree. So people may think the bird has become one with the tree. And we often see this in Vrindavan. If you go to Vrindavan, you can see parrots, they fly into the tree. The parrots are green color and they go in the tree. You can never see the parrot, it just merge, like merges in the tree. But the parrot's still in the tree. The parrot's in the tree eating the fruit. So people think it's become one. But we give the example about the green bird that flies into the green tree. It keeps his individuality. Now sometimes the Advaitist and the Mayavadi people, they give their example, they talk about just like all the rivers flow into the sea, and the river flows into the sea and becomes one with the sea. So we don't, uh, we don't uh, recognize that example. We say, no, it's not a very good example, because the rivers may flow into the sea, but what happens is the water can be evaporated from the sea and it forms a cloud. And then the cloud pours the water back onto the land. And the water comes down the, the mountains in the form of the rivers. Now, where does the water, which is flowing down the mountains and the rivers, where does it come from? It comes from the clouds which pour their water onto the land. And those clouds take their water from the sea. So the rivers flow into the sea, but the water comes back onto the land again. So we give the example that it's not like rivers flowing into the sea, but we should understand that it's, it's like aquatics. So you can see in the picture here the different fish, and this is like a big shark or something, you know. They're, they're there in the sea, and they have their individuality. They keep their identity. They don't become one with the sea. So within the ocean there's many different living entities and they're all individuals, eternal. And so we give this example to the impersonalists to defeat their argument about merging and becoming one. And here you can see Lord Krishna with all of his friends. And you know, they don't merge, they all they're all friends, there, there's a harmony and oneness there, but they keep their individuality. I hope it's clear to everyone. We'll go on. So, Lord Krishna has spoke uh, different levels of knowledge. We, we know he spoke earlier, he spoke about the, the Brahman, 
right? We had the, the verse about the Brahman, this, this one, Brahma Buddha. This is confidential knowledge, right? This is the confidential knowledge. But then Lord Krishna gives more confidential knowledge. And the more confidential knowledge is not shown here in this slide, but the, I, I have to add another slide in here to show it. But if you look at the book, 1861 up to 63, Lord Krishna speaks about surrender to the super soul. And that is more confidential knowledge, surrender to the super soul. Right? The Lord Krishna speaks, uh, he's seated in the hearts of every living entity and the living entities are seated on the machine of the material nature. Right? Yantra Rudrani Mayaya. Yeah? The Yantra, the machine. Yantra Rudrani Mayaya. What, what's that verse, Gita Induleka? Sarvashit? How does it go? Thank you. Yeah, Ishvara Sarva Bhutani Yantra. Ishvara Sarva Bhutani. Yes. Rideshe Arjuna Tishtati. Huh? Yes, okay, so like that. Anyway, 1861 is surrender to the super soul. And this is more confidential knowledge. And then after giving more confidential knowledge, then Krishna comes to give the most confidential knowledge, which comes in verses 64 to 66. The most confidential knowledge of all, to become a pure devotee of Krishna, become a friend of Krishna, right? You can see Krishna with the cowherd boys embracing. When you go back to Krishna, Krishna will take you in his arms and ask you, where have you been? I haven't seen you for a long time. So wonderful to be with you again. So, after oh, Lord Krishna's most confidential knowledge, that was, Manmana bhava madbhakto madhyaji mam namaskaru mami vaishyasi yuk vaiva madmanam madpar Like that, that, that Engage your mind in thinking of me, become my devotee, worship me and offer obeisances unto me. In this way I promise you will come to me without fail. So four activities were recommended by Lord Krishna. So the next verse follows Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, great Acharya in the line. He says that Arjuna says to Krishna that, oh, you're telling me to do four things, just give me one thing which I can do. So then, after giving the most confidential knowledge, then Krishna gives the sarva dharma varparikyasna, just surrender, right? And that's uh, 66, 1866, just surrender. I will protect you, don't, don't be afraid, don't fear. And you can see beautiful examples here. Prahlad Maharaj being thrown off the mountain and Lord Krishna is there to catch him. And here's the devotee in the ocean of material existence and the Lord is coming on the back of Garuda to pick him up out of the ocean. So just surrender and Krishna will give, Krishna says, I will free you from all sinful activities. Do not fear. So that is the one thing which... Uh, is recommended by Krishna to do, and just to surrender. Even if you have sinful desires, if you surrender to Krishna, he will still save you. Krishna is so merciful. And so we see Gajendra, he had material desires, he was in distress, but he surrendered to Krishna, and Krishna came and saved him from the crocodile. So here's the verse from the purport of 1866, the six items of surrender, right, from Hari Bhakti Vilas, and here you can see the six things we're supposed to do, except those things favorable. What is favorable? What things are you going to do which are favorable? Gita Induleka? Getting early in the morning, Time. Okay. And what are you going to do which is unfavorable? 
No outside eating. Huh? No prajalpa. No outside eating. No prajalpa. No, no meat, fish, and egg. No intoxication. No gambling. No illicit sex. Right. And then number three, conviction, Krishna will give you protection. Only Krishna can protect us. We don't pray to anyone else for protection. We get protection from Krishna. We depend on Krishna for protection. We don't depend on the bodyguard. We don't need to keep a big dog. We don't need insurance policies. We just depend on Krishna. We don't have to worship anybody. Then accepting the Lord as one's guardian or master. In other words, the Lord is one's maintainer. The maintainer. Krishna maintains. We don't need to worship any demigods to maintain us. Krishna maintains the, the devotee. Number five, full surrender. I mean, no desire separate from the desire of Krishna. And always be humble. Meek and humble. So these are the six items of dis surrender which are described. Here you can see a nice pastime, Lord Chaitanya saving his devotee. His devotee Kala Krishna Das, he'd been taken by these uh, Aborigine people, the Bataharis. They'd taken Kala Krishna Das away with them and he, he like left Lord Chaitanya to go with these Bataharis. Lord Chaitanya had to rescue him. He picked him up and grabbed him up, <laughs> protected him from these Batahari people. And here's Lord Chaitanya with Jagai and Madhai. He's come to chastise him for hitting Lord Nichananda. All right. So Lord Krishna is a friend of his devotees. And then the, the chapter goes on to explain about preaching and, and sharing Krishna consciousness. Here you can see a devotee distributing books and these people, they've got books. You can see the girls holding the books. They got some books from devotees. So this is Krishna consciousness. This is the mood of the surrendered devotee. We try to distribute books and give books to people, tell them about Krishna. Not only distribute books, we need to also preach what's in the books. And we need to get people to read the books and help them to understand them. And Krishna says in, in the in section 68 to 71, he said, there's no one more dear to me than that person who's trying to distribute this trying to teach this knowledge to others. You become the most dear to Krishna. Nachatasman manusheshu kashchin me priyakritama. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, earlier on, I missed a section earlier on, uh, I think it's text 61, Lord Krishna, is, uh, he says to Arjuna, now you decide Arjuna. What are you going to do? Right? Lord, and that verse is significant because it shows the Lord, Lord Krishna is not forcing Arjuna to do what he wants. And Lord Krishna gives all of us the opportunity to decide for ourselves what we want to do. Do we want to surrender or not? So Krishna says to Ar Lord Krishna says to Arjuna, what are you going to do, Arjuna? So in, in 72, 73, Arjuna replies, he says, Karishye vachanam tava. It's, yeah, he said, now, he said, I'm ready to act according to your order. I'm going to fight because you want me to fight, I'm going to do it. And this is what Krishna wants. Krishna wants Arjuna, he doesn't want Arjuna to fight because he wants a kingdom. He doesn't want Arjuna to fight just out of a sense of duty, but he wants him to fight in the mood of devotion, as a devotee, for the service, for the pleasure of Krishna. That's the highest principle. So Arjuna said, yeah, Karishe Vachanam Tava, I'm ready to do as you ask. I'm ready to fight. And then Sanjay speaks after this. And Sanjay gives his realizations and predictions. 
right? First of all, he said, by the mercy of Vyas. Sanjay actually was given the mercy of Vyasadeva. By the power of Vyasadeva, he was able to see what was taking place on the battlefield. And he was able to narrate it all to the blind king, Dhritarashtra. So this was by the mercy of Vyasadeva. And Sanjay said, he's ecstatic. His, his, his hair was standing on end. He was feeling ecstatic symptoms, hearing Lord Krishna speak the Bhagavad Gita. Actually, another point which comes up uh, just before this, uh, the, it, it is said that we can worship Lord Krishna simply by studying the Bhagavad Gita. That one who studies this sacred conversation, the sacred conversation, one who studies it, he's worshipping Lord Krishna with his intelligence. So this is a very important point you can make when preaching to people. You want people to read the Bhagavad Gita, you can tell them that you're worshipping Lord Krishna with your intelligence whenever you read the Bhagavad Gita. So Sanjay was feeling ecstasy, hearing Lord Krishna speak this Gita to Arjuna and, he's, and then Ar Sanjay said he's convinced, right? The, the final verse of the Bhagavad Gita, wherever there is Krishna, the master of mystics, and Arjuna, the supreme bowman, there is opulence, victory, extraordinary power and mor morality. In my humble opinion, Sanjay says, my <laughs> Sanjay's opinion, Sanjay said, wherever there is Krishna and Arjun, yatra yogeshwaro parto, yatra parto danurdara, tatra shri vijayo bhutir, dhruva nitir matirmana. So this is the conclusion of the Bhagavad Gita. Right? So this was a very brief presentation on slides. Hmm? Oh. We can go to Bhagavad Gita text here. Yeah. Yes. Oh here it is text text sixty three. We said six six sixty one to sixty three is describing surrender to the super soul. So you can see 61, Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna, directing the wanderings of all living entities. And in the purport to that text, Prabhupada gives an example. I don't know if you saw it, if you can understand it. Prabhupada talks about a person in a high-speed motor car and one in a slower car. Right? So this, the body is like a car and sometimes we get a high-speed car and sometimes we get a slow car. You know, somebody may have more wealth and somebody has less wealth. Somebody likes high speed and somebody just likes to take it easy, not to go too fast. You go on the high speed, you know, you get more fines, you get stopped by the police, you have to pay fines. It's a lot of trouble to have a high speed car. A lot more expenses involved. But people, obviously, you have to have more money to get a high speed car. And somebody else, he has a little family car, more economical, he won't have such great expenses. And so different karma, somebody's in, got money and somebody's not got so much money. So somebody's got good karma, they get the high speed car, and somebody's not got so much good karma, they just have a small car, slow car. The body, it's like that. So Krishna is saying, surrender to me, then the next verse he said, O sign of Bharat, surrender unto him utterly. Who is the him who, is, who we should surrender to utterly? Who is that? Super soul. Yes, right, the super soul, yes. 
super soul is being described. By His grace, you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode. Right? And then text 63. Thus I have explained to you knowledge still more confidential. Deliberate it, deliberate on this fully, and then do what you wish to do. So this is Lord Krishna giving Arjuna the decision that you decide what do you want to do. And Prabhupada explains this in the purport here. He says, uh, hear the word, yata chesi tata kuru, as you like, you may act. Indicate that God does not interfere with the little independence of the living entity. So he gives us that free will to decide. Actually, uh, someone asked a question to Prabhupada. Mm. What was it written? Because in text 61, in text 61, Lord Krishna says that he, he is the, super, the Supreme Lord in the heart of all living entities is directing the wanderings of the living entities. So he said to Prabhupada, Krishna said he's directing the wanderings of the living entity. So we don't have free will. Krishna does it all. Krishna just t makes us, puts us in a situation. Right? So how do you answer this Gita Induleka? By quoting this verse, Maharaj, because Krishna is cleared in this verse, it, it is a Gyanam Akhyatam, because Krishna has said, you say, see, Agru, Krishna has told, he, I have told you everything, now it's up to you to decide it. He has given all the knowledge to Arjun, now it's up to Arjun what he decides. Hmm. He does not interfere with the, the independence. Okay. Yes, like that. Everyone has desire. Each living entity has their own desire. So somebody desires to, send, to surrender to Krishna and somebody surrenders, doesn't surrender to Krishna, right? So Krishna gives that free will to the living entity. It's up to every individual to decide. Once, once you choose to surrender to Krishna, then Krishna directs the wanderings. And when you choose not to surrender to Krishna, then Krishna also directs, he puts you in a different situation. It, but you, you have that choice, either to surrender and take guidance from Krishna or to be independent. And when you're independent, that means you're under the control of the material nature, you're controlled by the modes of nature. You're not actually really fully independent. We have minute independence. So Krishna understands the desire of everyone. What do they want? And he will put us in the situation according to our desire. Because Krishna is in everyone's heart. So he knows the desire of every living entity. So according to their desire, somebody is going to surrender to Krishna and somebody is not. And those who don't surrender, to Krishna, they're put under the modes of nature. They're controlled by the modes of nature. Going ahead, 64. Because you're my dear friend, I'm speaking this most confidential knowledge. So we had confidential knowledge. Confidential knowledge was knowledge of Brahman. Then more confidential knowledge was knowledge of Paramatma and now the most confidential knowledge which is with, directly with Bhagavan, Lord Sri Krishna. Hear from me for it is for your benefit. Hmm? Let me read from the purport. Prabhupada says, The Lord has given Arjuna knowledge 
that is confidential knowledge of Brahman and still more confidential knowledge of the super soul within everyone's heart. And now he's giving the most confidential part of knowledge. Just surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Right? Just surrender. And that brings us up to 65. Manmana bhava mad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskaru mami vaishasi satyam te prati jani priyasi me. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. So if you're a very dear friend of Krishna, then you will do these things. You will come to me without fail. Krishna promises it's going to bring us very simple things we have to do. Offer obeisances, offer homages means offer obeisances. And worship Krishna, we can offer fruit, flower, a little incense, become a devotee. Think of Krishna. Concentration of the mind on Krishna, concentration of the mind on the form of Krishna constitutes the most confidential part of knowledge. And this is disclosed to Arjuna because Arjuna is the most dear friend of Krishna. <laughs> so concentration of the mind on the form of Krishna. So it's very nice when you have a form of Krishna, you can look at the paintings of Krishna, or maybe you have a deity or a statue of Krishna. So just seeing the form of Krishna within our mind, remembering the form of Krishna. Alright, so that, and then after describing these four things, then Krishna said, just surrender. Give up all varieties of religion. So Krishna came to establish religion. Why is he saying now, abandon all varieties of religion? Can somebody answer? Let me hear from a man. Some man can answer. Because now he is giving the topmost knowledge. Well, why is he saying giving up all varieties of religion? Isn't religion also knowledge? Because that are not uh, pure, that, that will not lead to the topmost realization, that is Bhagavan realization. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, and our pranam hara. Uh, because uh, in uh, religion there is, there is uh, there are so many rules and regulations like uh, Vaidhi Bhakti something like that. But in uh, what Krishna speak is uh, out of Vaidhi Bhakti or out of uh, rule and regulation. It's just like spontaneous bhakti. So surrender to Krishna because. Uh, uh, Religion is full of rule and regulation, but uh, spontaneous bhakti is not, not having rule and regulation. Hare Krishna. Anybody else like to offer? Hare Krishna Maharaj, can I? Yes. When we surrender to Krishna, then uh, all other religions are set, all other sects are satisfied, so he is the supreme God, so when we uh, root, when we water the root, all the branches are already, uh, already satisfied. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anybody else? Maharaj, is it abandoning the results of uh, the various? Abandoning the results. Well. <laughs> Krishna Maharaj, 
uh, because yeah. in another the uh, religions all are mixed with some other modes or some other another results other than supreme what kind of modes that means like uh, even in spirituality also brahman paramatma or in material universe like heavenly planets all these other in other dharmas they are uh, naturally having all those things but in while we surrender to krishna there is directly krishna nothing else uh -huh. yes krishna says give up all material religion right all varieties of religion all religion which is materially motivated Krishna is not encouraging any material motives in the practice of religion. That is called cheating religion. If you bring your material desires into the religious path, then that becomes kaitava dharma, cheating religion. So Krishna comes to establish the highest principles of religion. The, the principles of sanatandam, right? Pure love for Krishna. Love without uh, desire for economic development or sense gratification or even liberation. That is the nature of Krishna consciousness. And that is what Krishna wants from the devotee. He, does, he wants pure love. Love which is not contaminated with the material desires. So he instructs Arjuna, just give up all these other varieties of religion and just surrender. And similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam is like that. Dharma Projita Kaitavo. Mm. Give up those religions which are materially motivating. Okay, so Arjuna is told to give up these religions, these other religions. Then text 67 goes on to describe about who is qualified to receive this knowledge. And Lord Krishna says, this confidential knowledge may never be explained to those who are not austere or, or devoted or engaged in devotional service nor to one who is envious of me. Yes? So, do we have to be careful about who we allow to come to our class? But devotees are very merciful, Maharaj. Krishna says all this, but <laughs> devotees are merciful. Yes, that's right. The devotees are more merciful than Krishna. Krishna is strict. He doesn't want all these non-devotees, people coming, but devotees are more merciful. We will hear, Prabhupada explains later in the purport. Then 68, for one who explains this supreme secret to the devotees, Pure devotional service is guaranteed, and at the end, he will come back to me. So now Krishna is glorifying somebody who will preach and who will share this knowledge. He will explain this supreme secret to the, to the this, he says, preach to the devotees. So the pure devotional service is guaranteed. So if we, but if we try to give it to people who are not yet devotees, that's even better. <laughs> you get even more mercy. You give it to people, help to help them to come into the devotional path. <laughs> Prabhupada writes in the purple here, it is advised Bhagavad Gita be discussed amongst the devotees only. For those who are not devotees will understand neither Krishna nor Bhagavad Gita. 
Those who do not accept Krishna as he is and Bhagavad Gita as it is should not try to explain Bhagavad Gita whimsically and become offenders. Bhagavad Gita should be explained to persons who are ready to accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, if they're ready to accept Krishna, then it's all right. Anyone who, however, who tries sincerely to present Bhagavad Gita as it is, will advance in devotional activities and reach the pure devotional state of life. So that's another nice point, Prabhupada saying, if we're sincerely trying to present this knowledge, Krishna appreciates. Then 69, there is no servant in this world more dear to me than he, nor will there ever be one more dear. And I declare that he who studies this sacred conversation of ours worships me by his intelligence, right? Dar, darnya, darnyam samvadam, darnyam samvadam da avaha, darnyam samvadam avaha, abayo. The samvadam conversation, right? And darnyam sacred. So this is the very special conversation between Lord Krishna and Arjun. And we get great benefit by studying it. We're worshipping Lord Krishna. And 71. One who listens with faith and without envy becomes free from sinful reactions and attains to the auspicious planets where the pious dwell. So simply by hearing this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, just by hearing it, Without envy, you can we get it destroys sinful reactions and we get a very good destination. And Prabhupada talks in the purport about having public programs. He says, in other words, Bhagavad Gita is for the devotees only. But it so happens that sometimes a devotee of the Lord will hold open class, and in that class not all the students are expected to be devotees. Why do such persons hold open class? It is explained here that although not everyone is a devotee, still there are many men who are not envious of Krishna. They have faith in him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If such persons hear from a bona fide devotee about the Lord, the result is that they become at once free from all sinful reactions and after that attain to the planetary system where all righteous persons are situated. Therefore, simply by hearing Bhagavad Gita, even a person who does not try to be a pure devotee attains the result of righteous activity. Thus, a pure devotee of the Lord gives everyone a chance to become free from all sinful reactions and to become a devotee of the Lord. So this is the idea. Give everyone a chance to become a devotee. They're not devotees, but if they're willing to hear, they don't disturb, give them a chance. Let them come. And then Prabhupada talks about the destination of the people who hear. They hear the Bhagavad Gita. He said they can go to the Dhruva Loka. They can go to Dhruva Maharaj's planet, the pole star. You can go and stay there. You, all the, it's the highest planet, the Vaikuntha planet in the universe. So it's a very very special destination they can achieve. So then Krishna asks Arjuna, text 72, Have you heard this with an attentive mind? And are your ignorance and illusion now dispelled? And Arjuna said, Karishye vachanam tava. Yes, I have heard it 
My illusion is now gone. I have regained my memory by your mercy. I am now firm and free from doubt and I'm prepared to act according to your instructions. So this is the important point. I am prepared to act according to your instructions. Arjuna surrendered. He's ready to do what Krishna wants. He's going to fight the battle. So this is the conclusion of the Bhagavad Gita and you can see Pr Prabhupada gives a lengthy purport here, speaking about this, surrendering to Krishna, taking the instruction of Krishna. The illusion is now gone. Krishna consciousness is acting according to Krishna's order. A conditioned soul, illusioned by the external energy of matter, does not know that the Supreme Lord is a master who is full of knowledge and who is the proprietor of everything. Whatever he desires, he can bestow upon his devotees. He is a friend of everyone and he is especially inclined to his devotee. He is the controller of this material nature and of all living entities. He is also the controller of inexhaustible time and he is full of all opulences and all potencies. So like that, we should surrender to Krishna, take Krishna's instruction. Then, a few more verses, Sanjay speaking. Sanjay describes his ecstasy of so wonderful this conversation, my hair is standing on end. And then he says, mercy of the ass, I have heard this, conf this conf confidential talks. So he's great, and Prabhupada speaks about the importance of the mercy of the spiritual master. By the mercy of the spiritual master, we get the mercy of Krishna. Then 76, as I recall this wonderful and holy dialogue, I take pleasure, thrilled at every moment. I remember the wonderful form of Krishna. I'm struck with wonder more and more. I rejoice again and again. And then finally, he gives his prediction that where, where there is Krishna and Arjun, there will be victory. So Dhritarashtra was thinking his sons would be victorious. But Sanjay tells him, wherever there is Krishna and Arjun, there will be victory, opulence, morality and extraordinary power. So this is the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita. Any questions? Any hands up or anything? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, there is from Valmiki Prabhu. Valmiki Prabhu, you can go on. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. My humble obeisances and goes to Shri Prabhupada. Uh, I would like to ask you, um, we got a, a question for um, uh, OBA, so for essay, for this uh, unit, and it is about question four. There, there are a few uh, parts, and last part is how Krishna consciousness is independent of the mode of goodness. So I was thinking about this question that we, we know that Krishna consciousness is uh, above the three modes of material nature, but uh, if you can kindly uh, help me to understand that how Krishna consciousness is independent. Like a, the point yeah. the point is that anyone can take up devotional service from any position. They may be in the mode of passion or the mode of ignorance, but they can take up devotional service. Ah, okay, okay. 
That is the point, right? That is the mean. It doesn't, it's not that you have to first be in the mode of goodness and then you can do devotional service. You can take up devotional service from any position. Even one is in the mode of ignorance or passion, they can take up devotional service. Yes, Maharaj, understood. I, I couldn't just uh, catch the real m meaning of this uh, right. of this question. Uh -huh. yes, okay. Thank you, Maharaj, very much. Okay. Yes, any other questions? This is from Swaru Krishna Das. Swaru Krishna Das. That's Maharaj. Maharaj, I wanted to understand one thing. Basically, you have said so many times, but from you, I would. I, I really like love to hear uh, Bhagavad Gita. How does Bhagavad Gita, reading of Bhagavad Gita, explaining Bhagavad Gita, purify us? How does it purify us? Yeah. Well, one way it purifies us is because we, when we read the Bhagavad Gita, we will say Lord Krishna's name many times. And we will say also Arjuna's name many times. So these names have spiritual potency. Purify ourselves is we're repeating the words spoken by Lord Krishna. So these words that that they have great spiritual potency. These are words spoken by the Supreme Lord Himself. And just by repeating the words which He has said, we can do ourselves great benefit. We can purify Him. Can you hear me? Hare Krishna? 